Hey there, and welcome to the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. I'm TJ Hoisington, and in today's success interview, it was my privilege to interview Stu Massengill. You already know. My passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness within. My heart goes out to the underdogs, that, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. You see, it was great to have Stu Massengill on the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. And if you have followed me on my podcast for any length of time, you know that I only bring on the best of the best. We're talking best-selling authors, New York Times best-selling authors, thought leaders, celebrities, professional athletes, and CEOs that are changing the world. And you know what? Every once in a while, I find a diamond in the rough. And you know what? Stu is one of those diamonds. He has so much wisdom at a young age, and he is moving in a direction that's going to contribute a lot to the world. And so I wanted to have him on the show. And you know what? We talk about finding your passion, finding direction. He's also working with Tony Robbins. So there was a connection there because 20 years ago, I was working with Tony Robbins. So it was fun to kind of go back and forth with that just a little bit, but he really shares some tools for finding your passion. He shares some tools around how to communicate more effectively. And there's a really, a lot of good nuggets in this interview. Now, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, hey, do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you click that notification bell so that when I come out with a new motivational message or a success interview like this one, you'll be the first to be notified. And thank you if you're downloading this from Apple Podcasts or one of the other channels. Hey, thanks for being a part of my community. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump right in the interview. Stu, welcome to the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. Thank you for having me, TJ. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's do this. I'm really impressed with the story. I've already read about you. You're a high achiever at a younger age than where I'm at today. So, hey, I'm curious, would you share with me and the audience a little bit of your backstory? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in, honestly, uh, I, I just feel I was very blessed. I grew up with two great parents, an awesome older brother, but kind of under the surface of all that incredible family, the identity I sort of attached to myself growing up was I had a brother, he was social, he was an extrovert, he was outgoing. And I always kind of felt like I was more of like the introvert, a little more shy, a little more quiet, kind of hung in the back. And so that was honestly a big part of who I was until I was about 19 years old. I went to uh, college. Mm -hmm. And when I went to college, I was introduced to a business, a network marketing company. And for me, I truly took a deep, deep, deep dive in personal development. Um, It was the first time I was really introduced to, you know, some people like Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Jim Rohn, all these types of people. And so I just went really deep into that. And for the next three and a half years, uh, you know, we had a successful business. We did 8 million in revenue. um, And it was an incredible time. I grew immensely as a human. I learned to come out of this shell and really learn an incredible amount of skills. And from there, to not go too deep down the rabbit hole, kind of uh, overnight that that stopped. And, you know, I had a really, I guess it was like the most painful place I've ever been in my life, which was just feeling lost, no idea what I was like, you know, just always asking myself, what's my purpose? Why am I here? You know, the business I was doing, I thought was going to be my life mission. And all of a sudden, I couldn't do it anymore. And so I kind of went into this deep place of searching, what am I going to do with my life? Why am I here? And all of that ultimately led me to the work I do right now where, you know, I'm a national trainer for this guy, Tony Robbins, who you're familiar with. <laughs> and also I'm um, doing stuff with this, this company called Finding Direction, which I founded. And it's all about helping people figure out what they want to do with their life. And so throughout all that, there's a lot of bumps, trials, um, fought cancer for, you know, six months to a year. That was an experience. And so, yeah, now, now I'm here, happy, joyful, grateful for another day. And uh, yeah, man, it's a little bit about my story. No, that's awesome. So I want to dive a little bit into that. 
So here you are making a great income with the company that you're working with. By the way, I'll just yeah. say about multi-level type companies. I've right. worked in many of them in terms of as an outsider, as a consultant or right. as a speaker or whatever. And I got to say, one of the great blessings of those businesses, and I think I hear this from everyone uh, that I meet coming off of a stage or whatever, is that how much they appreciate no, the family atmosphere, but also I hear it resounding people saying the personal development and how Huge. much, I mean, you get people, I just want to draw a point here that you get people that have maybe done a career for 30 years and then they do this new career in a particular business, doesn't matter. And then they meet in these weekly meetings and so forth where they get a yeah. ton of personal development, which, teach, which oftentimes teaches them to go from a scarcity mindset to a more abundance mindset. Yeah, like Jim absolutely. Rohn, Les Brown, Tony, right, right? Going down that. So my question for you is, you, it sounded like you hit a brick wall. You were unsure what your purpose was, yet you're making good money. You're being successful at a young age. Yeah. Give me a little picture of that roadblock. What was going on there? Yeah. So sort of in that place. So I was with the company for three and a half years. Okay. Incredible company. I learned an insane amount. I grew a ton, but I had kind of got to the point where I'm a massive believer in following your heart and just mm -hmm. listening to your intuition. And I kind of had awesome. a little bit of inner turmoil in myself of, you know, I think it may be time for something else. But I had such a large organization that I couldn't leave. And, you know, I had all these people that I was leading. And so I was really at a place where it was like, you know, what do I do? And then by chance or fate or whatever, some stuff happened internally with the company. And it was sort of my opportunity to say, okay, this doesn't feel right. Let me step out of this. But I think the, the part there that I never thought about was once I stepped out of it, I stepped out and I went, okay, well, what the heck am I supposed to do with my life? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a plan um, when I left. And I think looking back on that, that was, if I, if I could go back, I probably would have tried to put somewhat of a plan together. Um, so I stepped out and then, you know, I, I just kind of fell into this place of what I want to do with my life. And what, what that says about you to me is that you really do lead with your heart. You really lead with this place of, um, uncertainty, uh, really lead from a place of faith. Right? Yeah. You didn't have a plan, but your values were screaming out to you. Hey, there's something more for Stu. There's something more in life yeah, for absolutely. you than, than whatever this was at that season of your life. And you were willing, which a lot of people are not willing to do was to close your eyes, <laughs> step out, and trust that things would work out and look what you're at, where you're at today. Any yeah. thoughts around that? I mean, that takes a lot of self-belief right there. Yeah, I think I'm just such a massive believer and you nailed it on the head that you got to just lead with your heart. And, you know, there's like a cliche saying, I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. that said it, that you don't need to see the whole staircase. You just need to see the first step. Mm, and, that's good. you know, for me, as I've gone throughout my life, whether it was leaving that, whether it was jumping into the business I'm now doing, whether it was doing the work I'm doing with Tony Robbins, I've always been such a believer that if you follow your heart, that the right things will appear um, as long as you have good intentions. And then if you can kind of incorporate a little bit of uncomfortability in there, Ooh. right? So, you know, you're growing. Um, not only will the right step appear, but it's going to be a step that's going to take you, it's going to be a step up rather than a step down. Love it. So you just, you, you're, you're nailing all these little points, right? So you can't, you just said this in a different way, but you can't grow in a comfort zone. So at some no level, you have to stretch beyond that comfort zone and make the decision early that you're going to be okay with the increased anxiety and tension feedback because you're going to get it. Anytime you're outside of your comfort zone, you're, and you're unsure, uh, it's yeah. going to create those emotions inside that scare you. And those that become successful, learn to acknowledge it, uh, but not let it guide them. Any thoughts around that? Yeah. One of the biggest things my, one of my first mentors taught me and I live, I try to live my life by this is he said, successful people do what's uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Yeah. And that's why they're successful. Right. And so anything I'm doing in my life, as far as pursuing business, growing, whatever aspect, health, you know, relationship, all these things, it's asking myself, all right, what is it that feels so uncomfortable? Like, what is it that my heart's pulling me towards? 
but it feels really uncomfortable because I've never been in that space yep. before. Mm -hmm. But I know by being in that uncomfortability or being in that discomfort, that's where growth is going to happen. And, and I'll even have, you know, points in my life over the last couple of years, especially where it's like, I'm putting myself in such an uncomfortable place that I feel like literally I want to throw up. Um, but it's like, now I'm starting to oddly welcome that feeling because I'm like, oh, if I feel like I'm about to throw up, a massive amount of growth is going to follow whatever it is I'm stepping into. Love that. What a great way to look at the world. Nice on that. Okay. So you do some work with Tony Robbins. I just yeah. give you a little heads up. I, in 1999, <laughs> yeah. the year 2000, I too was a high performance trainer for strategists for Tony Robbins, traveled all over the country. I was one of the few people actually who was married when I did it, had a child when I was doing Kudos. it. So, so my whole family, which was awesome because I don't, I don't recall them doing it before me. They usually had single people go out on the road yeah. for them. My whole family was able for that first, basically my second year of marriage, if you will, we had our first child and man, we traveled all over the place. And I think I gave 240 present, like you, I'm sure, yeah, 240 yeah. presentations to all kinds of businesses and audiences. And let me tell you, that was a great learning experience Huge. for me in terms of developing my skill and mastering my craft. Have you, tell me a little bit of your connection with Tony and how that has inspired you to do what you're doing now. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to take a quick back step to how I got here um, in a sense is that I'm always a believer that we don't do personal development because we're, we're weak. We do it to remain strong. Oh, good. And so for me, I was at a point in my life when I was trying to figure out my life after that first company. And I realized that I loved action sports. I'm a big snowboarder, skateboarder, grew up cool. doing that. I'm a, I'm a mountain person. Mm -hmm. And so I figured if I can work in that industry, life's, life's golden. And so to save a long story short, I got a position working at the company Vans, which is you yep. know the largest action sports company in the world. And so I was in a really good place in my life. I was you know two months away from going to work with them or a month away. And I was going to go on this trip to Australia to just, I'm a big travel fan. Love it. So I was like, I'm going to go to Australia. I'll be there for a month. Then I'll come home. I'll do this stuff with Vans. And ironically, Tony was doing his date with destiny event in Australia that same week. So again, faith, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be there. This is fate. I'm supposed to go to this event. Like that obviously just makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so I went to this event and one of the things Tony teaches, which I'm sure you're familiar with is something called the primary question. And it means essentially that there's a question we ask ourselves every single day, multiple times a day. And there's a lot of great things that come from it, but there's also a lot of not so good things that come from it because we're not aware of it. And so as clearly as this will be from the conversations we have, we've had so far on this podcast is my question was, what's my purpose, right? So five, five, 10 times a day, I would ask myself, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? What's my purpose? And by asking myself that question, that presupposes that I have no purpose, right? So by me asking what's my purpose, by default, that means that I clearly don't have a purpose because I'm asking for it every single day. And so I started to dive into this conversation of what are the good parts of this question? What are the bad parts? How can I reshape it? Now, my new question that I formed was how am I appreciating all the love of my life, God's grace, and my ability to serve right now? And one of the biggest things I got from it was I have the capability to serve. I have the capability to help people right now, right? I don't have to wait for some magical thing like I can do this now. And so that's when Finding Direction was really born. And Finding Direction was the fact that I realized I was this shy, quiet kid growing up that it's not that I didn't enjoy conversation. I didn't know what people conversed about. Yeah, like I was like, when you have a 10, 20 minute conversation, like what do you actually talk about? Like I was, I was blown away by it. I just didn't get it. And so by being in that company for three and a half years, I was forced to learn the communication skills. I was forced to learn how to not only have conversations with people, but like build true connection with people yeah. and also use that to start networking to not just be successful in that business, but ultimately to build a life that I love. And so I just figured to wrap that in a nice package that if I could help people with their communication skills, go from that place of shy introverted to maybe not an extrovert, but someone that doesn't get anxiety around conversations. It's someone that genuinely enjoys talking to other humans. 
Um, and then use those skills to build a life you love. I just realized that's something I could do to help a lot of people. And so that's where the podcast was born, Finding Direction um, podcast. And now we've launched it to a university where we're helping people figure out what they want to do with their life through coaching and things and how that all led to Tony to fully bring this around mm -hmm. is Tony and anybody in business understands this concept or should understand this concept called modeling. Yes. Right? I'm sure you're extraordinarily familiar. I'm sure, For sure everybody listened to this. You're probably like the modeling, no, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you're not right, it's like find someone who has what you want. And if you can model them, you can compress decades into years or even months. That's right. And so for me, as I've been building Finding Direction, the, the GOAT, the greatest of all time for me is Tony Robbins. And, you know, he's impacted my life in such a big way. He's impacted the world in such a large way that I just figured, okay, well, all these skills I'm teaching other people of communication, networking, using it to build the life you want. I figured, what if I use those skills to start working with Tony? And so that's kind of ultimately what bred me, brought me to working with Tony um, and, and since I've been working with him, it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. He, yeah, he's, he's like a hero to me. He's, you know, changed my life so immensely. And so to be able to, you know, learn from him and study from him and, and learn on like a, you know, person to person basis, it's, uh, it's been super cool. I feel like, um, I'm just a couple years older than you, but I feel like yeah. I'm hearing myself talking. Here's why I love no, that. No, it's so good because that was what you just explained was the exact reason why I went to work with Tony Robbins because, <laughs> I love that. because of modeling. I thought if it's yeah. true, if I can go learn it by fumbling around and trying to figure it out, or I can learn from the best. And I've written this in my book, so it's nothing new if anybody's yeah. read my books, but I thought, or I can multiply my growth exponentially mm -hmm. by getting around people I can model that are where I want to be. And then kind of, as you know, adopt their belief systems, yeah. adopt their strategies and adopt their actions. And as long as I can do that, that I can catapult a lot faster than I could otherwise. Here was the downside. You ready for this? I'm ready. Bring it. I left Tony Robbins and he had a, so there was a, he asked a primal question on stage in front of 5,000 people in the Hyatt in Chicago, I believe is where we were. Huh. And he was talking about living your dreams. And here was his primal question. And it was an embedded command. He said, when would now be a good time? <laughs> and I remember when would now be a good time? It resonated with me. I thought I've been working for him for a year. My heart is not to build Tony Robbins as much as I respect him. It's to build my own dream life, if you will. Yeah. So yeah. I nudged my wife and I said, honey, I'm gonna put in my two week notice. Long story short, I put in my two week notice, my home in Utah was being rented out. So I couldn't go there. So I asked my parents, if we could just come in to the basement of their house, yeah. and just live there for two months, I'll do my seminar. The first seminar I ever did was the power to shape your life seminar 20 years ago. Love and, it. and I started to do those seminars, but those two months turned into five years in that basement that was a very dark time for me. So although I learned the skills, learned the strategies, learned a lot of action, there's the law of the harvest too, that I just want to impress upon the listeners, right? Yeah. You reap what you sow is law number one. You reap more than you sow, which is law number two, but then law number three and the law of the harvest is that there is delayed gratification. So sometimes it takes a little bit longer when you see someone that's hugely successful and you're not there yet and you're frustrated because you're modeling them and you're not getting the result as fast yeah. as you want to. It will come if you don't give up, but it may not happen overnight. Any thoughts around that, Stu? Yeah, the thing that hops out to me is just the word heart where, you know, it's like, you could find someone and you go, this person has everything I want. I'm going to model them because they have the money I want. They have the income I want. They have mm -hmm. the, the X, Y, Z that I want. And you go to model them. And as you start to model them, just like you're saying, you're going to be tested on yeah. how long can you do this? How much can you put into this? And if your heart's not in the right place of being like, I'm not just doing this because I want the things that they have, but I'm doing this because this is actually what I feel like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be doing on this planet that's when your heart will pull you rather than trying to push yourself to the goal um, is I think, yes, modeling someone is massively important, but making sure you're modeling the right person 
for the right reasons, not just modeling someone because they have the success you want, um, but also that that they're living the life that you want. Love it. And I think just in my own world, right? I thought, I, I realized later on the mistake that I was making. And here it, here it was. I had all the belief in the world. I had all the passion in the world. I came out of the Tony Robbins organization. Yeah. I was going to light the world on fire. Okay. So then I move in the basement of my parents' house. What I realized later after I wrote my first book and it became an international bestseller and everything started to take off exponentially, yeah. the strategies that I was using in those five years until the fourth year, till my back was against the wall, I wasn't fully executing on all the ideas that I had. And it wasn't until I was forced to act on some of those things that were daunting to me, hence were writing a book. I always wanted to write a book. Yeah. I didn't believe I, maybe I, I kind of wanted to, didn't know that I had the self-assurance that I could until my back was against the wall and I had to put up or shut up. And I, you know what? I did it and it changed everything. So getting the, as you model people, all I'm trying to do is make a point that you've got to make sure you have the right strategy in place. So my question for you is, how can someone listening to you on the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast find more direction? Do you have any strategies or ideas that can help angle people to where they ultimately want to be and go? Yeah, so I would say, I mean, there's a lot of different things, but I'll give a couple concrete things that people could do immediately Perfect. is sometimes, and it's, it's almost sad that we almost live in a world now where people are okay with doing work that they are dissatisfied with, you know, where they're like, they're, yeah. there's this thing where people can just, it's like normal to be like, eh, like it's what I do for my work. And I, you know, it's like, it's work, it's work. right? Get it. Like, it's not going to be that cool. Right. And like, I am so in the opposite theme that that is not, it, that's not something that's okay. And that is not a culture that we should be, um, okay with in our world right it's like you should you should truly do stuff that lights you up because if someone else has done it in their life that you can do it so i would say the first thing and especially as we're in this covid world a lot of people have accidentally been given the answer they were praying for right where they're like i don't like this job or it's okay or it's decent or like maybe you were laid off maybe something happened and now you're in this place of you've been forced to look at life a little bit differently. So totally. for people that are in that place or whether they're in a job that they don't like or whether they're figuring out what they want to do or an entrepreneur anyway, one of the things I would say is sometimes people go throughout life, especially as we're in this social media world today, mm -hmm. and there's so many what I call shiny objects, right? You're yeah. like, oh, I could do this or I could do that or I could do the other. And there's so many things I just don't know what I... Squirrel, straight up, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, I don't actually know what I want to do with my life. And if you really take a moment and go back into your life, I would encourage anyone listening to this to write down what are three to five things that throughout your life you've constantly been pulled towards. And I can promise you that there's going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many things that you've always been pulled towards. And then what you want to start to do once you have found those things that you're interested in is you want to start to ask yourself, who are people that you know in those industries that you could maybe take to lunch, you could pick their brain about the industry, you could learn more about it, and that ultimately you could build a relationship with them where you could get your foot in the industry, in the door, to then try and experiment with that industry, right? Now, what you want to understand is this process of figuring out your life, it's, 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 a, it's a process. It's exactly that, right? Someone once said, um, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey, right? So what you want to understand is all you want to do is use networking to open doors quicker so that you can try things faster so that you can figure out and get clarity on what you want to do with your life sooner, right? So that's the biggest thing I would say to people is figure out what are those three to five interests you have. And then most importantly, you need to go try and experiment. Even if that's like volunteering with a company for a weekend, going and shadowing someone, um, even if you're, you're older, whatever, like go do an internship for a company and really in a matter of 12 weeks, learn what goes on in that world. And would you actually want to do that? Um, but the biggest thing is you need to try things. You know, one of, um, I was having a conversation just on my podcast the other day with a gentleman. He said, until you do something, it's a guest at best. Mm -hmm. 
right? And a, a simple analogy I give people is it's like, think of when you found out you like pizza. And if you don't like pizza, think about ice cream because everybody loves ice cream. But the first time you found out you liked pizza, you didn't have someone pull a pizza out of the oven, look at it and go, ooh, that looks good. Maybe you smelled it. You're like, smells good. You're like, oh, those pepperonis. Like you could just smell them. You can like see the sizzle that your friend came by and he's like, hey, pizza's good. And you were like, you know what? I like pizza. Like that's not how you found out you like pizza. You tried a slice, you tasted it and you're like, oh my God, this is delicious. So most people go throughout their life trying to figure out what they want to do by just analyzing everything and never actually trying anything, right? They're sitting at a dinner table. They're going, oh, I might like the potatoes. I might like the pizza. I might like this, that, and the other, but they never actually try any of it. And they go throughout their entire life wondering, why do I have no idea what I want to do? It's because you haven't tried anything. So, you know, those are a couple of things that people can start to do to kind of get a little bit of clarity to not go down too big of a rabbit hole. No, you're good. You're good. This is good information. You're giving some good um, nuggets here. So find the threads in your life that are consistent that you tend throughout your life to be drawn toward. Yeah. Mm, network with people m- so that you have the opportunity to grow from them, to model them. And by the way, I have found that many people, if you tell someone, hey, I'd love to learn from you, most people, it seems like my experience is if you have a good attitude and you are humble, right? Yeah. People are pretty successful, people are willing to give advice and willing to help and willing to help nurture you. And you've had people in your life to do that. I've had people in my life to do that. You know, I believe, and I love your thought um, about, and you didn't say it this way, but we're not born to have a job, right? You weren't born to come in this world to show up at a job from let's say eight to five. I believe at the core is that as a human being is to become the measure of our creation. So it's to become literally all that we're capable of becoming. And I love what you said. You can't truly do that until you try some things. So if you have an interest over here, but you're unsure of it, try it. Even if it's on a small scale, give it a shot. See if you find some interest in it. See if it grows on you, if you will. George Burns once said, I would rather fail at what I love, then Mm. succeed at what I hate. But you bring up a valid point. Unless you're trying these things, you cannot even ask the right questions that will lead you down the path to answer the right questions, right? To give you the right answers, right? So it goes back to those primal questions. And unless you're taking action and acting on those things in an experiential way, you're never going to ask the right questions that will take you further down closer to your dream life. That's awaiting for you. Any thoughts about that? Yeah. One thing I would just say on that is like in this world, again, of social media and this world we're in like yeah. comparison is such a large thing that as people try to go throughout and figure out their life and they're trying these different things, they're understanding it's a process. They're enjoying the journey, not looking for the destination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As they're trying to go throughout this process, there's this insane pressure that when you go on social media or when you go talk to someone or whatever, everybody wants to paint the picture of their highlight book to you, right? So like, you're like, oh, I'm trying to figure this out. And like, I don't really like this job. So like, maybe I'll try this other thing that I had an interest in. And then you go on Instagram and all of a sudden someone is like, oh, I'm living this dream life. I'm crushed. I live in this house. I got this cool car. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, at least if I stay here, there's somewhat of a guarantee that I'll get closer to that here than trying something else in the possibility of failure. Yeah. And I think that's to bring this full circle when it comes to back to what we talked about at the beginning of stepping into that faith and realizing that one, just shut the comparison card off. Like that's not serving anybody in the world. Good. Don't compare your chapter Good. one to their chapter 15. And then follow the faith. Like if you do that, you know, your, your Instagram or whatever may look dirty and bad and poor, but you get down at the end of that process and you go, wow, I'm actually truly fulfilled. When sometimes a lot of these people that you're comparing yourself to, you truly have no idea what's going on in their life. And, and they may not actually be happy with what they're doing. They not be, may not be fulfilled. And one of the most profound things I've learned from Tony, I'll share it real quick is I believe as you go throughout this process, and make it a process of figuring out your life, you'll get to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And as you try to compare to other people, one thing you want to understand is that success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. 
right? So if, if you're going to try to do all these things just to compare to, to show that you're somebody or whatever, and you get to this place and you're not ultimately fulfilled, and maybe you got all these other shiny things, that's true failure. So you want to figure out what lights you up. You do that by tasting all these different things. That's going to give you so much more clarity. And, and truthfully, if you're listening to this, just take that moment to be like, I'm shutting off the comparison card because that doesn't serve that doesn't serve anybody that doesn't serve our world for you to do that you speak wisdom Stu. that's really good that's a really good reminder in the world that we live in today you know it was w clement stone in the 1950s 40s 50s 60s you know w clement stone right he would always say a little a little bit he would always say he's one of the grandfathers of personal development and so forth back in the day he was friends with uh earl nightingale and some of the others yeah. back in the day But he would always say, never share your goals with someone unless they can truly help you achieve it and believe in you and give you ideas and so forth. Just to go out and share your ideas with the world as a public commitment, like Stephen Covey says, it's better to have a private victory. So there is this tendency to want to show everything that we're doing. I've tried to teach my children, don't be a shower. You don't have to show everything. Go try these things. And learn from them, but you don't have to share your goals with the whole world. Of course, there'll come a time when you'll want to share those goals. When I wrote my book, I wanted to share that with the whole world, right? Yeah. But at the time, if you were to read, if you think you can, you would not find anywhere in that book where I talk about writing the book in the backseat of my car. I'm I'm just saying. So we tend to put the the our best foot forward. But sometimes it's best just to hold some information back and not, as you say, not just put the best information forward either. Go after your goals, try some things um, and don't compare. I love that because there's a lot of pressure on comparing. And you'll get to the top of that ladder if you're not careful, realizing that you're leaning against the wrong wall. Yeah. Yeah. Really good, Stu. Thank for you. Real. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So finding your direction. Um, let's talk about communication. What are some strategies? Like you were this introvert. Introvert. Yeah. You had to come out of your shell. Give us a little bit of that story. And then also some strategies that can help someone that's listening to this that's going, wow, you know, I'd love to live my dream life, but this and that scares me. Give us a little idea of how to respond to some of that. Yeah, I would say one of the most profound, two of the most profound things that I learned that took me from this place of shy to Mm -hmm. being very comfortable having conversations was one, I had a mentor and I would always follow him around and because I wanted to learn from him and everywhere I followed him, we would walk into a room and all of a sudden someone would go, his name was Jed. Someone would go, oh my God, Jed, it's so good to see you. It's like, and they loved him and they would like give him this big hug and they would walk away and I would be like, that was weird. Like maybe that was his cousin or something. And then we'd walk to the next room and someone else would do the same thing. And it happened time after time after time. And I don't know what happened for me at that moment, but something clicked in my head that went, oh my God. Like when Jed was born, the doctor did not put him up to his ear and go, "Mm, this one's going to be a talker. And then put me up to his ear and go, "Mm, this one's going to be shy, quiet, introverted. Like That never happened. We were all born the same way, naked, scared, and crying. And so what happened to me in that moment is I, for the first time in my life, I went, oh my God, these are skills that he learned. He's simply been doing it longer. And if he learned it, that means I can learn them. So for me, that was, that opened the door of like, wow, this is actually possible. The second biggest thing for me that shifted some of my communication abilities was realizing, and this sounds like such a an oxymoron, but it's like to be the best communicator, you don't need to communicate that much. Oh, I love that. Yes. Right. Because it's like people's favorite subject in the world is themselves. So if you can simply get good at asking questions about people and allow them to talk about themselves, they'll leave the conversation going, Oh my God, like, I don't know what it was about that TJ guy, but I love him. Mm. And then if, if someone went up to that person after and they said, Oh, well, where's TJ from? Or, you know, what does TJ do? They may go, Oh, I don't even know anything about I honestly, I don't even know anything about them now that I think about it because the whole time you had them talking about themselves. So it's kind of like a, you know, it doesn't really make sense, but to be the best communicator, you just need to be the best question asker. Love it. Love it. 
I often say to be a great conversationalist, ask questions 20% of the time and listen 80% of the time, right? Yeah. A great conversationalist will say some things, then they'll ask a question and they'll listen. Love that. That is, yeah. that and is real. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the other things for me, and this goes back to what I was like, I don't know what people talk about. Um, what do they have conversations about? What I learned was a simple building block for communication that honestly changed my life. And mm -hmm. it's called form. And it stands for, if you're listening to this, I would write it down. It stands for family slash from occupation, recreation, and motivation. And when I learned that for me, it was simply, oh my God, this is how, this is, this is what people talk about, right? So you go into a conversation, you ask people, oh, where are you from? Right, the F. You go into, oh, occupation. Oh, what do you do for work? R, recreation. What do you do for fun? M, motivation. What are your dreams, goals, aspirations? And it's a building block for communication. And then, I mean, truthfully, if you want to build from communication to a connection, the secret there, and we could spend a lot of time on this, the secret there is finding a common ground of interest with them. Right, because if yes. you think about it just for a moment, if you're listening to this, think think of your best friend for a second. And if you think of your best friend, the reason they're your best friend is because you have a massive amount in common with them. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you feel safe around them. You feel comfortable around them because remember, you're your favorite thing in the world and therefore you like people like you. So when other people's favorite thing in the world is themselves, they like people like themselves. So if you find common ground of interests and they now feel like you're like them, they're going to trust you. They're going to love you. They're going to want to connect with you. And you're going to walk away from the conversation and they're going to go, holy crap, that guy, Brian, that girl, Christy, she is an unbelievable human. Yeah. And it's simply because you've used this structure of communication. You found those common ground of interest um, and you really started to build, you know, connection with people rather than just communication. And I would say there's probably one or two people thinking, yeah, but that could be a little manipulative. No, listen, Stu and I are talking from a place of be sincere. Yeah, you love, know, I, integrity, I authenticity. 100%, right? So finding those things out, you know, I remember, and, and really doing it from a sincere place because you really want to understand that person. You really want to find out what makes them tick and so forth. And, and, and not just so that you can get what you want to get, but really that later on, you're able to contribute in a big way, the same way that person has contributed to you. I think one of the biggest things there too, is we talked earlier about like, knowing the right people so that you can open doors of opportunity in your life. Like if you want to go try these different things and you have a network of people that maybe can introduce you to those places, if you don't have the skills to communicate and to connect with them, you could know all the right people. But if you can't build relationships the correct way, those doors may not be open to you. Mm -hmm. So what you want to make sure you're doing is as you're having these conversations with people, you need to become incredible at building these relationships with people with integrity, with authenticity, right? With a loving heart. And when you do that, now people leave these relationships going, oh my God, this person's amazing. And I know someone in this company, I would love to introduce you to this person and help you open that door so you can figure out what you want to do with your life and to tie it full back circle. Just like you said, now you're adding to the world, your true gift. You're not just waking up going, ah, eh, work today. Now you're like, wow, I've really found the thing that lights me up. Love it. Well said. Well said, Stu. You know, I learned many years ago with Tony Robbins. He said <laughs> he would always he would talk. I don't know with your experience if he's still talking about it today, but he would say opposites don't attract. He would talk, he would say, I remember back then that he'd say, no, if you really look at it, they have enough alike hmm. with a few differences rather than a lot that is not alike. And the vice versa and so forth. He says, so right. opposites don't attract. It's likes attracts like. Yeah. And so yeah. It, it, you may say, but my wife and I, or my partner and I, or whatever, are so different from each other. Yes, that's true. Because we all have that need for variety in our lives. So we do have some of that. Yeah. But at the same time, there's enough that we do share that outweighs the things that make us different from each other. So anyway, just want to point that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% agree. Um. Let's end with this. Let's do it. And really, I mean, after, after this, you can share anything you'd like to share. All right. Any other principle, how they can yeah. connect with you. What are you working on right now? Feel free to go there. But I want to yeah. know what lessons did you learn from 
uh, do I have this right at 24? You battled cancer or was it a little bit Correct. before then? Is it okay? Give us a little bit of that background. What did you <laughs> learn from that process? Yeah. Um, I'm a very positive person. So for me to, to kind of walk through the process. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life at this point. And the first approach I took was let me go travel to the action sports capital of the world, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And because I love action sports. So if I go there, yeah maybe I'll figure something out. Right. And, right. and I have this weird relationship with New Zealand. I love it. I feel like I lived there in a past life. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm going there for seven months. Like this is my dream. Um, I get there two days into it. I figure out that basically there's something not right with my body. Um, if you're a guy listening to this, I would just say, check yourself. We'll just keep it at that. Mm -hmm. But so I had a skydiving appointment the next morning. So I, because I figured out at night. So I went skydiving, went skydiving because you got to have fun. You got to enjoy life. Yep. Then I went to the yep. hospital and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then after like two days of tests, you know, they do the classic, they like sit you down in a room and they're like, all right, sir. Like, um, like you need to get the next flight home. Like there's some sort of tumor. It's either cancerous or benign, but like you need to go home and you need to see your doctor. And then, you know, I got home 48 hours later, it was confirmed. It was testicular cancer. But the biggest thing that I really took from that and that I still continue to take as a philosophy that I have in my life, that everything in life happens for a reason, and it happens for the right reason. And for me is I went through that entire process of cancer, and it eventually like spread into my stomach, and I had to do a big surgery in my stomach. Um, you know, I think some people could look at that and go, you know, why is this happening to me, angry, all these different things. But for me, I figured this, this happened to me for a reason. And I've come to terms with some of those reasons. But I understand that I'm going to continue throughout my life to be told what reasons I, what reasons why that happened to me. Um, so that's really one of the biggest things I took from that is everything happens for a reason. And then what I would just say, which was a tip that massively helped me get through the cancer process mm -hmm. was there's, there's an extraordinary weight with the word cancer. There is. And I think sometimes it's not always, it is on the patient. It is on the person that has cancer. But sometimes I think it's heavier on the people that are related or friends with the person that has cancer. And what I mean by that is I was in the room with my parents when I was told it was cancer and you could see in my parents and I could not imagine as a parent to hear the words out of a doctor's mouth saying your son has cancer. Like, holy, mm -hmm. it gives me goosebumps, gives me chills. I don't know yeah. what I would do. Right. Well, now I do because I've been there, but it would be crazy. And so as soon as I heard that from the doctor, we went out of the doctor's office. You could see in both my parents' eyes, a little bit of like, holy crap, um, this is scary. But what I told to them, which changed my entire cancer journey is I told them like, hey, don't treat me any differently. Don't talk to me any differently. Don't treat me like I have something in me that could kill me. Because if you treat me that way, that's going to plant a seed in my brain. And if there's a seed in my brain, that seed can then grow. And we don't want that seed to grow. So just don't treat me like I have something to me that's going to kill me. And I, I went around to every person. Like I got home that day. My brother was sitting in this chair. I remember like it was yesterday, he turned around and he, he was like, oh my God, like you have cancer. And he gave me a hug. And the words I heard was, and like, excuse my French, but the words I heard was, holy shit, you might die. And like, it, that was intense. And then I just stopped him right there. I said, hey, don't treat me any differently. Don't talk to me any differently. Don't treat me like I have something that can kill me because if you do, that's a seed that can grow me and that's not a seed we want to grow. So for me, that was so helpful because as I went throughout my cancer journey, I didn't have a ton of people saying, oh, are you okay? Are you going to like die? And like everybody just knew, oh, this is just like part of Stu's journey and it's part of his story. And like, he's going to get through this and, and we're all going to make it. And, you know, so I would say like, if you got cancer, if you know someone that has cancer, those are some of the biggest things that helped me in, in a tremendous way. You said everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Do you think, so think back a little bit. Yeah. Do you think you would have had that perspective? Because that's a matter of perspective, right? That's a belief system. Yes. That's a belief system. Yeah. And I would think that's a belief system that came by choice at some level. So what, would you have thought that way had you never had the onslaught of, <laughs> the wonderful teachings of some of the greats and the personal development, the three and a half years of the personal development. Yeah. So if you could go behind that, 
Yeah. Do you think you would, and then receive, and then had cancer? Do you right, think right. you would have had that same belief system, or, or did you always have that, or was that also like the skill of your mentor who taught you that you can be a better communicator? Was it something that was learned? That perspective. Yeah, I've I've thought about this before, and it's a great question mm. because when I really start to boil into it, if I didn't have those years of personal development and growing and and realizing at the core of it, the true just power of my mind. I think that was the biggest lesson I took from all this personal development is like thoughts really do become things. If I didn't go through that and I was introduced to cancer and like had cancer, I, I truly wish I could tell you what it would be. I know it would be different. That's as much as I know. Um, I don't think I would have approached it in the same way. Um, and I'm, and I'm grateful that I had kind of that as a precursor to the cancer. But, you know, I think because I knew the power of my mind, That's right. I knew that as I go through this cancer, like it's going to do what it wants. One, someone once told me a quote that like every moment you spend sad as a moment of happiness, you never get back. Mm. So it's like, if I'm going through this process, like whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I might as well be freaking happy and trying to make the best of my life as I go throughout this process, because it's going to like, whatever's happening is happening there are some parts that are out of my control. So I might as well enjoy my life rather than, you know, trying to not. But I do think what you're saying is, yeah, if, if I didn't go through all that stuff and learn the power of my mind, I do think it would have definitely been, it would have been harder to go through that process. Well, and, and you think of, I'm just thinking hypothetically, but I'm thinking of the many people that came up to you and said, I'm so sorry, Stu. I hope you make yeah. it all these different things. Maybe in the back of your mind, you were thinking, you haven't been exposed to the things that I've been exposed the previous yeah. years. Imagine how they would have responded to you in that situation. I mean, I just, that elevation of thinking, that elevation yeah. of thought, thoughts are things, they do make a difference. And I, I like what you said that the cancer is going to do its thing. You only have so much control over it. Now I've never had it. So I speak from a place of never experiencing it. But I did write The Secret of the Slide Edge with one of the gurus in personal development, <laughs> Bob Mowad, many years ago. Yeah. And he was on his deathbed when we wrote that book. And it was because of cancer. And let me tell you, I never met a more positive, infectious teacher of mindset, mm. of attitude. Yeah. I'm telling you, never in my life have I met someone that was an eternal optimist the way that he was. And he employed everything. He believed as he laid there without getting into the story, as he laid there for the last two months of his life, he believed up to the last day that he would one day stand up, walk from that bed <laughs> and he would live to a hundred years old. He says, if George Burns can yeah. do it, I could do it. And so, but cancer and life and everything happens for a reason took yeah. a different course in his context. So congratulations. He ended up passing away, but congratulations on you. I do think that Thank your you. attitude and that elevation of thought did at a very cellular level, my belief is, yeah, that although you didn't have ultimate control of it, you had some control of it. And it was probably in the scheme of things, a big part of play there. So nice that yeah. you recognize that, you know, anyway. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No, I mean, I just imagine what you at 24 years old to go through that. I just think kind of changes life perspective a little bit, probably in some ways for you and, yeah. and probably even changes some relationships too. I don't know. Yeah. Um, how were you strengthened? This is the last question I have on that point. How were you strengthened as a result of having, having to kind of work through this cancer issue? Um. I don't know. It's like, you know, you go through other things in your life and I'm just an ultimate believer that like your story is your story. And if you're not finished doing your work here on life and you determine however that is determined for you. For sure. um, but I know that I still have work that needs to be done in this world. So whatever I go through and the cancer is just like, like part of it told you so, yeah. Um, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not done with what I'm supposed to do on this world. And that's kind of, the way I approach it. And so whatever's thrown at me, it's just like, all right, this is just like part of the story because I know I'm still here to do, to, to make a difference in this world. And so um, that's kind of, I'd say how it strengthened me. It's just like, you know, another check mark on the box. 
the <laughs> feeling I get of you, Stu, and I've never met you before, is that your, right. your future is bright. You are going to make a mark on this world. Thank and you. it's like it. you to do it. It's like you, you, ha you have that inner instinct to do something great. And I hope you do. I hope that the path Thank that you. you're on and the path that you'll continue to move in really illuminates the world for millions of people. Stay humble, stay kind. You have a beautiful smile. And if you, <laughs> and if you'll you. keep that learning and teaching and humility, dude, your future is bright. So I look forward. So let me ask you any, any last words that you'd like to say, how can people find out about you? What's your website? Anything? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I, again, just believe I'm here to serve and help in any way that I can. So if I can do anything to anybody listening to this, um, please reach out. You know, I've, I've uh, you know, been through a handful of things. And if you're in a place where I can serve in any manner, please reach out. You know, don't be shy. Um, and then the biggest thing I would say for people is, Obviously, we're a big believer of figuring out what you want to do with your life, that it's all through meeting the right people. Yeah. And so we have a free resource if people want to check it out. It's called Five Steps to Meeting Anyone You Desire for Introverts. And if you want to get it, you just go to findingdirectionuniversity.com slash giveaway. Um, so just go there, check that out. And again, if I can assist or support people in any way, um, just, just feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help. What's the website again? Findingdirectionuniversity.com slash giveaway. Awesome. Awesome. I hope everybody looks into that, takes advantage of it and connects with you. Thank you, Stu, for being on the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast, brother. Yeah, it's my honor. It's been a blessing to be here and I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. So thank you, TJ. Yeah, I feel like it's been a blessing too. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Absolutely. Hey there. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, could you do me a favor? It would mean the world to me if you could write a simple review or give me a star rating. I would really, and I mean really, appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Now go out there and unleash your greatness within. Greatnesswithin.com